What's up guys, this is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some easy at-home wide receiver workouts that you guys can do that do not require any equipment. Let's get started. But also, fellas, if you are a wide receiver and would like to train with myself and my staff of coaches this off-season, we are traveling out to 10 different states across the country for two-day long QB and wide receiver training camp. So check out that very first link in the description below. If you guys are local to the DMV area, St. Louis, Missouri, Honolulu, Hawaii, Boston, Massachusetts, Cleveland, Ohio, Austin, Texas, Seattle, Washington, Newark, New Jersey, Denver, Colorado, or Los Angeles, California. We are coming out to all of those locations for two-day long camps, so check out that very first link in the description below if you're interested, fellas. Let's get started with this video. All right, guys, so the first exercise we are going to be getting into is going to help you with your cuts at the top of the route. So whether that's snapping down, whether that's cutting off a of one foot, but this is working on your foot strike, and this is also working on your ankle stability and a little bit of explosiveness. So when you guys are running, like let's say, for example, it's a post route, right? Let's say I'm running at this DB, I'm going here, and I'm about to cut. When you cut off of your right foot, do you want to cut heel toe or do you want to be on the ball of your foot? Probably the ball of your foot, right? But so many wide receivers cut off of their heel first because of bad habits and incorrect exercises that they are doing. They'll cut, they'll reach, and when you guys strike the ground with your heel first, what happens is your toe snaps down and that can cause your leg to extend, which can lead to injury, number one. But two, when your foot is extended and outside of your frame, you physically cannot push. You won't have any speed out of the break. So you could self-fade all day long, get that DB to bail, but not have any explosion at the break, which will give him time to recover. So we need to have the proper foot strike. So when you guys cut, we don't necessarily want to be on my tippy toes because there's no power there either. That's going to cause you to fall forward. You guys want to try to cut on the ball of your foot so I can push to drive out of there. But we need to build habits of having that correct foot strike. So that's what you could do on this. So I have a weighted plate right here. You don't need a weighted plate for this. You just need like some kind of platform, if you will, or honestly, just set up like some kind of circle or landmark that you could jump onto. You still do not need any equipment. And that could mean like you get a piece of chalk and you just circle something in the ground and jump into that circle. We just need some kind of a landmark. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna be on your right foot and we are going to jump off the ball of my foot to here, jump back, jump middle, jump back, jump middle, jump back, all the way through. But the entire time, my heel is not touching the ground to build strength, to build that ankle stability, which will allow us to cut at a fast speed off the ball of my foot to be able to drive out of that break. So again, you guys wanna do this, I would say, I would say maybe put like a 30 second timer on and do three sets on each leg. But we're just jumping back and forth, back and forth, not letting my heel touch the ground to build that strength with proper cutting mechanics. All right guys, so this next exercise we're gonna be discussing is also going to help on your foot strike and you being able to absorb force on a cut leg. So what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna need a box, um, maybe not even a box, a bench. You could do this off the edge of your couch even, if you're, or a chair. You don't, you don't need that much space or that much equipment for this type of exercise. But you need something that has some kind of a level, your back porch, that you can fall off of. So what, are, what is everybody afraid of when they cut on a dime? Because like I think we all can agree on every single route. We're trying to make the DB think I'm doing what? A fade, right? We're trying to get him to open up and bail, and we got to cut. But when we sell fade, we obviously have to run at a high speed. So we got to get that guy to backpedal and bail out. Out of there. So everybody's biggest nightmare when they're cutting full speed is, oh, well, coach, what if I hurt myself? And usually it's from what we talked about in that last example, improper foot strike. So this is going to help you guys absorb force and be more comfortable cutting at a high speed. So you're going to stand on this box. All you're going to do is this bench or your porch or whatever, and you're going to fall forward. Now, when you fall off of this thing, you are going to try to balance on one foot. So when you land, you're going to balance on one foot. Now, this might seem like it's going to hurt. Oh, I, that, that doesn't seem weird. That seems awkward. It's building ankle stability and getting you used to absorbing force onto a cut leg, which is something that we all have to do as a wide receiver. But if you guys land heel toe, you guys land tippy toe, that's when you guys could hurt yourself. We want to land on the ball of my foot. So I'll show you guys full speed. So you come off of here, you fall, catch yourself on one foot, make sure we're striking lightly. You shouldn't hear yourself hit the ground. It shouldn't be this loud stomp when you land. It should just be a light ball of the foot tip touch. That's what it needs to be at the top of the break, and that's the same type of mechanics we need when we are making a cut. So I would say maybe try to do about four sets, or maybe about six to eight reps of that on each leg. 
All right, guys, so I think we all can agree at the top of the route, where do wide receivers need a lot of power from? They need a lot of power from their hips, right? They need a lot of quick twitch explosion from their hips because that will allow you guys to drop into a break faster to create more separation from a DB, but also when you guys drop and have that explosive explosiveness with your hips, that allows us to stop faster, right? But it all like the term that I'm trying to get across to you guys being violent with your hips, but to be violent, you need explosion with your hips. And this is a great exercise to do. So you need a bench, you do edge of like a, a edge of a chair, edge of your bed, um, you could do this on your back porch even, but what you're going to do is you're going to start on your knees and you're going to be doing a kneeling jump, so you're going to sink at your hips and explode and try to catch yourself into this parallel position slightly above, because usually when wide receivers drop at a break, they don't get below parallel, they get right to parallel, and we have to have explosiveness and stability from this position. So now when you land at this position, we are going to jump and explode up from my hips and land on top of this box doing almost almost like a box jump. Now, we do all of those that we do this exercise to solely be able to generate explosion and solely to be able to generate that power from my hips. So I'm going to show you how this thing's going to look full speed. All you do is we're going to dip down. We're here, explode up, explode up, and then land on that box and make sure when we land on that box, we're trying to be as light as we can with my feet. All right, guys, so now when it comes to the upper body of a wide receiver, what are some things that you should do? So we make a lot of different, you know, gym plans for people. We have different gym pro gym workout plan products on our website that we offer. And a lot of people will always ask questions like, hey, coach, like why are there no bench? Why isn't bench press on there? Why isn't, you know, like we have a lot of different shoulder press variations and stuff like that, a lot of Olympic lifts, but why isn't bench press on there? And we included bench press on our more advanced workouts because this is kind of a more advanced concept to understand. For a beginner, it's really not like something that you think too much about, but you guys also have to train correctly when doing those routine exercises. So when you're at home, obviously maybe some of you don't have a bench press, but you have different variations of push-ups, just like there's different variations of bench press. So let's say, for example, you have access to a bench. As a wide receiver, you guys shouldn't be, as an athlete, as an athlete, just as a general athlete or football player, you guys shouldn't be just sitting there flat and just doing bench press. What you'll get more out of, because as a football player, what are we always trying to do? We're always trying to be fast and explosive, right? So that means we have to exert our fast twitch muscle fibers. Like, so you're trying to block somebody, you guys are trying to swat hands off the line. It's a very quick twitch movement. So we need to be building that with the workouts that I do. So rather than just doing flat bench, what we should do is we should maybe be slow on the way down, control it, then explode up to work on that fast twitch. So same thing, if you don't have access to a bench, what can you do? with push-ups, right? And so I'm gonna give you two variations of that. So it's easy for me to sit there and say, hey coach, what should I do if I don't have equipment? Oh, push-ups. But like, that's, that's a basic answer. Like, that's not an answer I'm gonna give you guys. I wanna give you something that you could actually get value from and will actually translate to on-field play. So when you're doing a push-up, maybe like you guys have probably all seen clapping push-ups before. If you can't do a clap push-up, that's cool. Do something called a plyo push-up. So a plyo push-up is where you go down, just normal, and then when you go up, you explode. And you don't have to clap your hands, you just explode up and then land back down again and repeat the process. Now another thing you can do is something called a hand release push-up. So you go down, but you release your hands, and then you explode up as fast as you can. But notice what both of those things did was the explosion at the top of the movement. And wide receivers need to be the most explosive players on the field. So when you're working out your upper body, everything you should do should be controlled. Then we explode. Control, explode. Because that's what's going to translate to on-field play. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and would like to train with us, we are coming to 10 different states across the country. Check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you out to one of our off-season camps. I'll see you guys next time.